Did I totally forget to record an intro for this video? I wonder if it's because it took me two months to finish all this embroidery? Hmm, maybe. That must be it. Welcome to Cosmiland, I am Alice and I have finally finished doing all the embroidery for my Peppa cosplay. I mean, I didn't need to do all this, I could have just used some heat transfer vinyl or something else, but hey, sometimes you just go crazy like this. I think the finish is actually amazing and pretty accurate to the period I'm trying to recreate, so I'm happy about it, so I'm not going to complain about it. It took me almost two months to complete this cosplay and most of that time was doing the embroidery. Make sure to check my previous video about Peppa to know more about how I did it. On this video I'm going to be focusing mostly on how I assembled all the pieces together and the first thing I had to do was to trim all the excess fabric from my embroidered pieces. Of course, you don't need to do this by hand and you don't even need to do embroidery or use heat transfer vinyl. If you want to do it more simple, you could have just added a piece of lace at the bottom and it would have looked as lovely. Personally, I love challenging myself and I thought this part would look much better if I were to do it as if I was in the old times and the only way to add some colour to something was with some threads and stitches. The skirt for Peppa is really, really big. I barely fit into my room when it's stretched out on the floor. And the first thing you want to do is just attach that piece with the orange embroidery on your fabric. If you prefer, you can cut the skirt in two pieces and insert the orange strip. Sewing this piece of fabric on top is actually a bit tricky and personally, I decided to hand stitch it in place to make sure the fabric did not poker. I used a technique called fell stitch. This technique is similar to a slip stitch, but it has shorter stitches at the front and that makes them barely visible. For this project I used a lot of ruffles. I also made my own bias tape with the pieces of fabrics that I had left and at some point I actually did run out of fabric because I did forget to cut one of the pieces but that's okay, there's always a way to fix it and I will show you later how I did it. I made my strips into a long piece of fabric which I finished with French seams. Don't worry if you don't know how to do it because I will be showing this technique on my next video. I also used stencils to add details to the collar and you can see how I do this on my previous Peppa video. Once again, you do not need to spend this much time on the cosplay if you don't want to. Just do what you feel comfortable with. I'm going to be assembling my collar next. Make sure you place the pieces the right way around. It should look like an open smiley face. Then you just sew the sides. And don't forget to do the stencils on the collar. All these little details are actually included on the pack of the pattern that you can download on the link in the description. I wanted to add bias tape to the collar, but the curves were so small I couldn't do it. Instead, I just cut another collar piece and sew the edges together. I marked the edges and sewed the pieces together very slowly. And don't forget to snip those corners before you turn your fabric. The trick to get those corners crisp is to insert a piece of cardboard with the right shape while you are pressing the collar. And then you can top stitch your fabric for a nicer look. And now it's time to prepare the ruffles. I added a strip of bias tape to the edge of the fabric. Then I folded the bias tape around the fabric and stitched it in place. I repeated the same process for the other ruffle. You can gather your fabric by running a straight stitch and pulling one with threads, but personally I prefer to use my ruffler foot on my machine. 
It is quite convenient if you do this quite often and it gives you a much neater finish. It is very inexpensive and it's very easy to set it up. Moving on to the sleeves. I didn't want to mess it up, so I decided to iron the hem of my sleeves before I attach the tape to them. That way, I can be sure the tape will be parallel to the edge. I decided to fold my tape on the sides, so I won't catch it when I'm sewing the sleeves. I find it much easier to work with the sleeve while it's flat. It is not as perfect as other methods, but once the sleeve is gathered, any gaps are not noticeable. Then I just needed to stitch it in place. Before you close your sleeves, sew two lines of parallel stitches on your cap from notch to notch. You can now fold your sleeves in half and sew them to make a tube. Make sure not to cut the side of the tape while you are sewing or you won't be able to insert the ribbon to gather them. Finally, it was now very easy to hem the sleeves as I had already ironed them. The bodice is very simple. With right sides together, sew the sides and the shoulders of your front and back pieces together. Now you want to attach the sleeves. Turn your bodies inside out and insert your sleeves right sides out, making sure you match the notches. Because you did not forget the notches, did you? You should have a single notch at the front and a double notch at the back. Try to find them and match them with the ones on the bodice. You will notice the bottom of your sleeve should follow the curve of your bodice, but the cap is extra large. In order to solve this, you want to pull the threads from the stitches you made before on the cap. Gather your cap until it is the same length as your arm size. You also want to make sure your gathers are even, so push them with your fingers until they look neat and tidy. Once you're happy with your sleeve, you can go ahead and sew it. The collar involves a bit of measuring to get it even. I placed the lower tire on top of the bodies and pinned it in place making sure it was an even distance from the collar. Mine is actually a little bit shorter than the one I suggest in the pattern because I ran out of fabric but it's okay, it's just a little bit visible from the front and I made sure to adjust it in the final pattern for you. Using a zigzag stitch you can now sew it in place. I follow the same process to do the top tire and I also attach the top collar to the edge of my bodice. The easiest solution to get a clean edge was to attach a strip of bias tape to the edge of the collar. Then I am going to fold the bias tape completely so it is hidden on the inside of the collar. This makes for a very clean edge which is very easy to make. Again, as this can be a bit of a tricky part to sew, I decided to do it by hand. It doesn't take long and it's much cleaner. I am going to do something a bit weird to gather my sleeve. As I wanted to make this project loosely based on the 1890s, I thought it would be more accurate to use a piece of ribbon to gather the fabric. This is actually not the most comfortable thing to do, but I thought it would be a nice touch. However, you are welcome to use elastic instead. And by the way, I just discovered today that it was actually invented in the 1800s, so it would be technically accurate as well. You can now finish it with a ribbon and don't forget to bend the edges to keep it from fraying. I 
And at last we are assembling the skirt. Don't forget to test the length of your skirt before you sew it to make sure it isn't too long. I am running two rows of parallel stitches in order to gather the waist of my fabric. I have prepared my waistband by folding the edges inwards. I also added interfacing for a little bit of extra stability. To get even folds, I have marked my waistband and my skirt at equal distances and I am matching the pins as I gather the fabric. It is a bit tricky because there is a lot of fabric to gather and you want to make sure that all your gathers go to the front first and from there you go slowly towards the outside of the skirt. It takes a little bit of time but you will eventually get there. Once it's ready you just have to sew it to your waistband. And this is where I messed up. I was supposed to be doing a bottom placard on the back of this to make it accurate and I totally forgot to cut the piece and ran out of fabric and I didn't have enough to fix it so the only thing I could do was to attach a bit of bias tape to the back just in order to turn that fabric and make it look half okay which ended up making my dress is slightly too tight because there's not enough space at the back and it's not as neat as I would have liked. I can now attach my bodies to the waistband and this is much easier because these are just two pieces of straight fabric. Just make sure to fold the end of your waistband inwards before you sew it to make it clean at the end. Sew the pieces together and now the dress is in one piece. I sew one more piece of fabric to the inside of my dress to hide all those edges and also to make a channel where I could put my ribbon to gather the skirt. In this particular case I think the ribbon is a better choice than the elastic. My skirt is quite heavy and if the elastic is not strong enough, it may not sit on the right position. I can regulate the width of the fabric with my ribbon more easily and as it is stronger, I know it won't fall down. Once I inserted the ribbon and added some snap buttons to the back, my dress was complete. pattern was inspired by the beautiful traditional dresses of Colombia and my own knowledge of historical Hispanic garments. It took some time to finish it but I think it was worth it. Just I haven't quite finished yet. This cosplay is based on an 1890s dress and you can't wear a 19th century dress without the proper foundations. So next week I will be making 1890s undergarments with a chemise, drawers and petticoat to go with this dress. As always remember that you can follow my progress on Instagram and you can get a lot of extra content on my Patreon, including detailed instructions, photos, sketches and a lot of extra content. Let me know in the comments if you will wear something like this and if you would like me to do other Encanto cosplays, let me know as well, who knows? I hope you enjoyed the process, have a wonderful day and see you next time, bye!
So are you going to be introducing this video? 